Hi Charlotte, how are you? Hi, I'm not bad, I'm not bad. How are uh, you doing? How's life in Essex? It's very nice, it's, it's kind of sunny, so okay. I can't complain that much. So we, we, we had some really horrible weather. Um, yeah. And you're, you're in the office, aren't you? I am in the office, so yeah. just in, in... I'm in the home office. In the not home literally office. the home office. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, so have you always been based in Essex? Is that where you Pretty much grown up here. Um, not far from where I live now, actually. I grew up on a farm. Um, it's quite a rural part of Essex. Um, again, you've got really good connections into London and things. So I spend a lot of time in London as well. So okay. I do. I still do consider myself Londoner. I lived in London mm, probably nearly sort of six, seven, eight years. Oh, right. Okay. Um, but yeah, Essex and London. Yeah. And as well, yeah. I can't claim that because I, I live in Maidenhead, so just outside of, of London. I've pretty much lived there my whole life. So, um, yeah, I, I can't claim the, the London tag. And, you know, as, as I've got older, I actually kind of like the fact that we're not London. Um, yeah. I like the, um, I always, I think when I was younger, I hated Maidenhead in some ways because there's not really a lot going on. It's very rural-ish. It's getting yeah. more modernized now, uh, but yeah. it's um, I liked how like you know it's just peaceful and, and quiet. Yeah. And yeah, that's how you know you're getting old. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's how you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you get off, you get off the train after a commute, and you just sort of go. <sighs> yeah, that's how you know. It's just clean, fresh air. It's just like <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so you also lived in Israel for a short period. Yeah. Um, well, not so sure. I was there about five or six years, um, oh, no. sort of 20, 2010, 2015 ish. Um, but yeah, it was, I mean, that's probably like the biggest culture shock I probably could have ever done. Because right. um, it's, it's, I mean, for me, the weather was massively different. You know, you know how us Brits love, love to talk about our weather. It was too hot. Really? <laughs> yeah struggled there well, struggle well, with the heat but you do acclimatize to it um, what, what degrees are we talking about summertime I, I do you know what I don't know just really really hot okay <laughs> yeah yeah too hot for me um but yeah no it, it was it was an amazing experience and um, for somebody like me who grew up um kind of only really knowing about Israel from like my children's bible illustrations Right. You know, it's just, it's not something that I was taught about at school, not something I'd seen pictures of. And I, the first time I went there, I think I was about 20. And it's just an incredible place. I mean, this is a country the size of Wales, and it has a ski mountain, a desert, um, you know, vibrant cities and nightlife and beautiful green hills of countryside. I mean, they've managed to pack everything into okay. that little place. Amazing. I I am um, I, I should be going Israel end of next month uh, with work. So I, I'm really excited to go. I, I I've ne never been. I didn't Is realize first? It's like, first time. Yeah. First. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you'll love it. I didn't realize it's the same size as Wales. Is it that small? Tiny. It's really tiny. You can you can I mean and also the thing is it's quite long and thin, so you can like drive across it quite quickly. Um, top okay. to bottom, I think, takes a little bit longer. Um, I mean, there are, I think there are domestic flights to Alat um, from Tel Aviv. Um, but where are you going? It will be Tel Aviv. Yeah. Uh, we, we, I think we have an uh, event there. Um, so I, I should be going, I think it's end of May. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I've been supposed to go for like over a year now, but with like COVID and stuff, it's been constantly played. So I'm hoping right. this definitely happens. Um, yeah, you'll enjoy it. So what was your experience like in Tel Aviv? Are you Jewish at all? Or is it just you just see I'm quite I'm quite a strange conundrum because I converted. Right. So the thing about converting is you kind of gain a religion and inherit a prejudice. Right. So I mean, I'd heard from my husband and other people, you know, the anti-Semitism that they've got growing up and you kind of, you know, of course you accept it and everything, but I don't think you completely understand it until you sort of cross that, you cross the threshold. And suddenly, you know, you, you I went from having friends that I've had for years to do go home. Wow. Yeah. And I, that's what really spurred on 
a lot of my campaigning because I had that unique experience of being, I suppose you'd probably call it white privilege, wouldn't you? You know, just not having any particular prejudice against me to suddenly overnight uh, being hated for, for a reason that I didn't understand. Um, so that's what really spurred on a lot of how it all started and how I got dragged into it, really. Was that following you went to Israel or were you, were you on that pathway before? I, no, no, I went to Israel before I had decided, because um, uh, I did it twice. I did the reform conversion and then I did the Orthodox conversion. It's not an easy thing to do. It's, it's very, very difficult. Um, it takes a long time. Right. Um, but yeah, it was something, it was something that happened very organically. Right. And um, yeah, so it, it's kind of a unique perspective. Yeah, it definitely sounds like it. So you know, you, you, you're in Israel now, you're, um, you're, you're Jewish. Uh, what was that sort of experience like, you know, where, where you, you know, we obviously we see on the news and stuff like this, it seems like there's attacks and stuff. It seems seems like a war zone on the yeah, news. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not. Is that accurate? <laughs> No. <laughs> okay. So much of what is reported in the mainstream media on Israel is absolute crap. Really? And, you know, that's what's very frustrating because I was there for a couple of wars, um, the 2012 and the 2014 ones. And, you know, you would be in bomb shelters and would be in the Mamads or quite often because uh, I had horses there. I was never near a bomb shelter. So, you know, you just okay. you lie down in a field or you just carry on through the alarm. And, um, and then you would just sort of see the news that would report that, you know, Israel's just kind of out of the blue started to attack sites in Gaza. And you're like, we've been in bomb shelters for like three days. What are you, like, you don't mention it. Yeah. And it's shocking because I really did contact at the time lots of British news agencies going, please let me come on and talk to you and tell you from my perspective what's going on. And nobody was interested. And I think that's why um, I set up my Twitter account. Because I'm like, well, if you're not going to talk to me, I'm going to talk to myself on Twitter. And that's and that's how that started. So then I started to kind of get involved in that and I gained some following. And so when things happened, I would tweet it. Your, your Twitter account pretty much exploded. I think that's how I caught on to um, uh, you and just generally things that were going mm -hmm. on in, in, in Israel. And it does show that there is um, a generally an appetite from people to want to know both sides. Um, uh, my Israel experience and just commenting on it is very limited, but I, I know from saying simple stuff like, I don't think Israel 100% wrong, and you get absolutely destroyed for saying something along those lines. And um, so I can't imagine what it's like on your side of the, the fence. I'm guessing it's pretty horrific, some of the abuse you get. Yeah, I'm, do you know I'm so desensitized to it now? Really? So desensitized. And that's, the, you know, you might have seen on my Twitter a couple of weeks ago, was it a week ago? I got a Nazi salute on the tube. Uh, it I wasn't actually related to anti Semitism. It was because I had um, the badge on uh, for Ukraine, the Ukraine coat of arms badge on. Um, but, you know, I spoke to friends afterwards. I spoke to the police, were amazing. Um, Transport for London Police, they were brilliant. Um, and everyone kept saying, you know, are you okay? Are you okay? I'm like, I'm fine. I shouldn't be, <laughs> I shouldn't <laughs> be fine. But I'm just so, you, it was a little bit strange having it on the tube, not going to lie. But again, at the end of the day, I'm a Londoner and we see a lot of stuff on the tube, you know. But yeah, so I get, I get lots of things into my DMs, all sorts of bizarre things. And you just, you're so disconnected from it now because you've just, you've learned to just completely ignore it. I think that what's worrying when, when I see the Israel stuff in terms of DMs, like I, I've had, you know, a fair few death threats and like race, racial stuff on Twitter. But the difference is, I think in some ways, what makes it quite a bit worse and in some ways worrying for like yourself and, and Jews and stuff is the stuff you see in like the London protests, the way um, they attack Jewish shopkeepers and stuff like that. That's where for me it gets a bit more worrying. Quite haunting, quite haunting isn't it? Well, I, I saw a stat that you're more likely I think wearing a, a, a kippah, you're much more likely to get attacked wearing that than a turban or uh, the, the Islam equivalent, um, which I think a lot of people would be really surprised about because it's not really, we don't talk about it, it's not really reported. So I think that would be a massive surprise for a lot of people. Yeah. It also doesn't help that it is stoked by so many people in political office. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of like um, like a pet project for them. and you know, it, Look at look at last last week the stabbings uh, the shooting in Tel Aviv. 
how many of these vocal voices for Palestine and peace in the Middle East, or peace in general, as they like to they like to market themselves as, how many of them tweeted, mm. you know, condemnation for these actions? None of them. I guarantee there's a lot of people that didn't even know it's happened. Like, I, I think a lot of people will probably listen to this and, and will be hearing this for the first time, what happened last week. I yeah, guess. but some of those, those people in political office who, who know better, they know. Yeah. yeah. They know. I mean, what well, as always, uh, so I, I actually lived in Oxford for, for a little while when we used to have on the high street, there was a, a massive, like, Palestinian rallies, stands and all this sort of stuff. And this was when I actually, very first time I think I got in remotely involved or interested in Israel, Palestine. Mm -hmm. And I remember, you know, they would like, um, they'd almost quite forcibly give out free Palestine wristbands and, and stuff like this and just go and approach you. And I, it always really, I found that quite bizarre because to me it was a bit like, well, freedom to what? Like, they're, they're not a democratic state. It's not like, what you're, it's not like it's, you know. Freedom from Hamas. Yeah, I mean, that's not a... <laughs> That's yeah. not a safe organization. And you see stuff like, and we used to see it also like, you know, gays for Palestine. And, and I, I'm pretty certain like you know, the rights for gay people in Palestine are not good. Um, yeah. Likewise for yeah. women and stuff. So, I, it, and it seemed weirdly enough to come from sort of, um, I would say middle to upper class white people, which was yeah. really surprising to me because they might, I, I, you know, I'm not greatly educated on it, but I, I doubt that they are. And so they, but they would really they not passionately about this subject matter which I could never grasp I can guarantee they couldn't find it on a map <laughs> guarantee I mean it's quite hard to find on a map anyway it's so small <laughs> um, but yeah take all the words off the map and find it let's uh, go to sort of because I think you've got fairly good knowledge on this sort of historic references you know in, in terms of you know we, we know a lot of people know Israel was formed um, an ongoing battle with, with, with Palestine the general, what we see in mainstream media is Israel for the last 40, 50 years has been trying to expand and get more land. And you know, they, they keep breaching things and they keep trying to get more. That seems to be the general media narrative. And I'm sure if you ask a lot of people, that's what they would say. Um, I'm interested to get your perspective on that and a bit more sort of referencing. Well, there was a few historic wars where sort of, you know, there was the there was the establishment of Israel and, you know, you had the Yom Kippur War. I mean, it's, it's, it's funny that people, when they always talk about Israel, they always talk about, like, it's only been there 50 years. This has been there thousands of years. And this conflict is not new. There has been conflict in this region for a very, very long time. It's historic. Um, I don't always agree with Israel's policy. I don't always agree with some of the um, sort of actions of building in sort of areas which I, I just think sometimes you don't need to stoke tensions when you don't need to stoke tensions. But that doesn't mean that I go to a march and start chanting from the river to the sea, you know, basically yeah. annihilate the state of Israel. And that's really that's really what this is about. It is about wiping out the state of Israel. And that's what it's always been about. That's what it's been about 1,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago. You know, I mean, we can- Why do you think that is? But why, why do you think that is? <laughs> I, oh, there's, there's so many theories on this. Do you know what? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't know why it's such, but you know, you say that and it's such a melting pot of culture and religion there, obviously, because you have so many people from so many different countries and cultures that live there and they live there very, very happily, very, very harmonious. It's the kind of like the, the political fringe outside of, you know, people on the borders, um, there's trouble. Right. But within Israel, it's, it's very peaceful and it's very content. So it's completely not what you think it is on television. I'm always fascinated. I, I think it's it's so hard to talk about Israel about just getting abuse. I, I mean, the amount of times I've been called a, a Zionist or, or something for just yeah saying stuff like you know I, it, it's wrong to completely you know abuse this country. And I think what kind of annoys me a bit is how uh, it trickles in. It's trickled into our country, and British Jews face fairly horrific signs of racism. Anti-Semitism obviously is, is a thing, but sometimes I think people use it and 
it is racism like it, it, it's it, mm. it's it's not a sometimes sometimes it's almost like a softer word for racism like it's out and out racism and yeah I think it from what I read last year it went up by more than 20 percent or something crazy like it's really on the rise which is a bit scary and worrying it is it is really bad I mean Zionism a Zionist is somebody who believes the right of Israel to exist and so yes I'm a Zionist but it has become a little bit of a slang for Jew Oh, okay. Is that well? Is that, well, yeah. Then I would say I'm mean, like, okay. I, so I was, when the, when when you when you're getting called a Zionist and this and that and the other, it's it's a little bit of an underground slang word for Jews. So they can they can be anti-Semitic without looking so anti-Semitic. Right. Right. Um, so that that's kind of where that's gone to. Um, and you saw this with like Chris Darby and some of the other Labour MPs at the time that were using Zionism, Zionist, 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 and we knew what they meant. Mm. We knew exactly what they meant. So, and um, what was your other point that you were just making? It's gone out of my head. About um, racism sort of increasing in the, in the last few years for... for yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's been happening in, in, in real life, but I'm not, you know, I'm not surprised because as we, we talked about earlier, like the levels of it on Twitter that have like, it's just, it's, it's huge. It's, and then what's depressing is when, when you see these sort of racist accounts and you click on them and then you see they're based in, you know, the UK and you think, wow, there are people walking around amongst us with these views. Yeah. I mean, they're probably not wearing them on their, you know, as a badge as they're walking, but they're there. You know? I, I don't know because we saw the protest. They were pretty vile. I mean, I, I remember seeing that video surfacing about that guy screaming, you know, if you meet a, a Jewish daughter rape their daughters and stuff. Mm. That was like on just off the road. Like this wasn't, you know, nothing um, um, just casually said and done, like, which I think is really, it is getting a bit worrying in, in, in that sense. I, I, I've got a different take in some ways. I think, do you, do you think some of it comes from a bit of envy and jealousy in some ways? Because generally Jews in this country, um, are probably one of the most successful religions. I actually, I know for a fact they are, because we did, um, I appeared on um, the British Hindus in Instagram, um, we did this conference thing. And on that, we were talking about um, what, how the how Hindus have changed in the UK, so how they started and where they were and where they are now. And basically look, going into that research in every single sort of category, um, it showed that it was pretty much quite neck and neck with British Hindus and Jews in terms of um, success parameters, you know, I don't know, financially, education, welfare, um, least likely go to jail and all that sort of stuff. It was, if you looked at the top two, it was always those two. And so I, 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 do you think some of it comes from envy? It could be, it could be. There is, I mean, there is a very good work ethic amongst Jews and how, how they're kind of raised in the family to work hard and lots of studying it could be I mean it's just it's such a story I mean I think it is the oldest hatred as far as as far as I'm aware um it's just I think it's just become embedded hmm. I think it's become accepted but that, that's the worrying thing for me I think it's just become accepted I think it always has been yeah I think it always has been I mean I always kind of think there's like there's three there's three kind of categories of anti-Semitism. So you have that kind of anti-Semitism which exists in the Middle East, which kind of comes from the conflicts, um, and it's just something that is taught and something that's kind of gone through generations, and that's there. And then I think you have the hard right anti-Semitism, which we're all very 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 much aware of, and then you have the sort of leftist white middle class anti-Semitism which I think just don't know anything. They're a, they're a growing bunch as well. And they are, they're the ones that probably that irritate me the most because I have quite a <laughs> decent amount of exposure to them. And they're, they really, yeah. They're, 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 they're awful. awful. They, they know they're, they're, they're dangerous because they're so ignorant. Yeah. But they, they speak with such confidence and such, you know, like command in like, they know what they're talking about and they don't. Well, 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 I think what they don't actually understand is they actually stoke up a lot of people. They actually stoke up some really bad people. I was having this chat with someone 
um, recently about like sometimes on Instagram and stuff, you, you see people who share like these infographics and because it's in a fancy infographic, it must be true all of a sudden. And it'll be on Israel and Palestine and it will be like very, you know, anti-Israel. And what they don't understand is sometimes by doing that, um, you actually, you're actually giving license or you're, there's some really bad horrible people out there and they you must use that as justification so it's like oh look this this doctor this lawyer's put up you know middle class but put up something about how bad israel is this is exactly why now i'm going to scream outside my window rape all jewish daughters like they don't actually understand that you just because you've seen an infographic and you know something that like, you have no idea how where it's been whether it's been created or whether it's actually source checked or anything by sharing it you're actually sometimes sharing information that can be really dangerous to dangerous people so that's where i think they need to be a bit more careful about what the message is generally sharing yeah absolutely and because it comes from again that kind of like middle class it could be doctors it could be lawyers it could be you know they think well they, well they, they seem like very good people they must know what they're talking about but they yeah. don't because you know like you said and there is so much fake news and fake footage and spin and only one side of the story and this this does go on both sides by the way this isn't just something that you know goes one way um it, it's that kind of danger of only getting one side of a picture and it's something now we're seeing you know with russia and ukraine you know yeah. the people in russia are only seeing one side of this whole picture um whereas there is a whole other story to be told and that, that can be very dangerous well, where, where do we see the other side in terms of Israel and this country? Because I'll, I'll be honest, I don't think I've really seen it. You don't you, you don't see um, an awful lot of it. It's mostly through um, people like me, people on Twitter, you know. Yeah, you don't you don't see. I mean, we, I can ask you, do you see it? No, 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 no. no, 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 no. Um, I don't, I, I, I'll be honest, where I've gained knowledge on this is um or oh, another organization like ours conserve friends of israel who i think do some really good stuff um there's probably where i started to understand or have um something about israel in, in the sense of it's not this horrible country that's trying to take over palace and that was probably the first kind of and then yeah generally twitter some social media um it, it's so hard to find un buy stuff on this it's it, very it's, difficult it is very difficult um i mean there's some there are some good work but even look at look at company organizations like amnesty yeah 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 you know it's that where do you, i mean the U, the un's you know pretty bad if you if you follow um hillel Neuer's account um un watch that's pretty good at calling out some of the bias oh, okay. um, i mean there are there are these kind of activists out there but it's just not in the mainstream so how does the everyday person know? Interesting. Amsi was where I learned that Palestine is one of those places that still, I, I, this is 2019, I think, 2020, but still there's reports of um, women being stoned to death. So um, so they, they, they I, I, again, I think it's 2019, 2020, so I don't know if it's still the case now, but they did report that. So that, that kind of tells you the kind of, that, that's the thing that really annoys me when you see in London the protests about, you see lots of women and you see, you know, gays for Palestine, all this sort of stuff. And you, and you just think if you were in that country, you would not be living the way we are living here. Um, so that, that's where that, that kind of, yeah, it does uh, grind my gears a little bit in the sense of that makes yeah no sense. Yeah, yeah. And you're, you're attacking the only country that does truly have equal rights yeah. for gays and women in the Middle East. But again, I, I, I just don't, I don't think they know. Well, oh, do you think, I, I don't think they know. And I, see, I think for some of them, I think some of them are genuinely good people. I was, I, I do think some, some of the people who like share these messages on Instagram, the ones that do these infographics or general things, I think they have their good intention. They, they've seen a bit of news and they've seen a, a child dying and, they, and they, they, they're showing. And I, I think they're very, those mm. people are very, ill-informed and I think there's another group who just do it for the sake of you know, virtual signaling look at us like you know we're not islamophobic you know we, we we're you know we're we're really ahead of, we're really progressive and you know I think there's that massive group there um yeah and I think those, you're right. those people are really um yeah I'm not the, the biggest fans of but going back to your time in Israel so what was 
you, you said it's sort of ducking down when there's like you know the war or, or bombs going off and stuff. What, what was it like in general? What's the perception of the average Jewish person in Israel of what's going on between the two countries? What internally? Internally, yeah. The fighting between each other. Um, I think you know most Israelis just fight, just think everything's very unfair. <laughs> you know they're being attacked all the time. They really are. I don't and I. I can't remember what his name was now, but we had a British colonel that quoted this. I think they're like one of the most humane militaries in the world. They drop leaflets before they drop bombs on Hamas bases to try and encourage civilians to leave the areas. And I just think Israelis just, I, they, they know the outside world is looking at them through biased lenses. They know um, that they're in a very, very hopeless position, but they still manage to thrive through it. And, you know, like the first... The first siren um, that I heard, I was at the stables at the time, and you know, you, you never expect to hear that in your life. You hear about your grandparents, you know, having to run to shelters and things like that. I never thought I would have to, in my lifetime, do something like that. And it's just kind of that moment, like, well, what do I do? And I just remember turning around, nobody's panicking. <laughs> no, everyone's just like, oh, okay. You know, I was like, oh, you know, there's a man spoke to his children and he said, look, you know, if we die, we die. If we don't, we don't. We just carry on. We don't let them change how we live. I just thought this is really bizarre. You know, this is this is a this is something that you know will end up until quite recently in Europe. My generation's not really experienced. Um, so I now, I now I know Ukraine's kind of experienced it, and, yeah, and they don't have the they don't have the Iron Dome. Mm. You know, and that's one of the things, isn't it? Thank God for the Iron Dome. Because like, if if not for the Iron Dome, I don't think Israel would be. I don't think we'd be having this conversation now. Do you want to explain to people who may not know what the Iron Dome is? And so the Iron Dome is a missile system. Um, every time Hamas um, or anywhere, you know, in the north you've got um, Hezbollah, fires a rocket into Israel. Israel has uh, batteries that will fire missiles to take out missiles in the air. So it's basically it's an anti-missile system, um, but it's very effective. It, it, some of them do get through. Right. Um, I remember the thing is that I remember I think this might have been the 2012 war um, but some of the rockets that Hamas were firing I don't think they were doing it with excellent precision because a huge amount of them fell within their own territory All right, okay. and, you know, and killed their own people and you just thought well no one reports how many you know and that goes that goes into the kind of like looped in of how many Palestinians have been killed by, you know, Israeli military during that war. And I'm like, well, a lot of them were killed by their own because Please. they, they you know, launched faulty missiles. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think I can't remember the stats now, but I think I think there's usually on average like two to three missiles fired into Israel every day. If you look at it on an average, you know, so without the Iron Dome. I don't know where, I don't think, I don't think they'll be there. Well, it's worth noting, I think Palestine have broken the um, ceasefires, like in terms of a percentage, I think it's like over 90%. It's something crazy in terms yes. of the-, the, the Yes, uh, yes. And that was another thing about living there is that, you know, you know that you've been in a bomb shelter for the last sort of 20 minutes with constant rockets going over. And then the BBC reports, oh, Israel's broken the ceasefire. No, they didn't. <laughs> I, I know it wasn't us. <laughs> <laughs> that must be so frustrating because you're there. You, you it see is. It, it right is now. so frustrating. It is so frustrating, and you will see the voices on. And again, it's on. It's, it's either in the Israeli media, some US media outlets um, will report it, okay. but UK media, nah. I, it's I've never. So it, frustrating. For me, the, the turning point where I completely lost trust on UK media on Israel Palestine was when. I don't know if you remember when BBC shared a picture of a dead Palestinian child, but it was actually a dead Syrian child. Is it Syria? That happens yeah. so often. I think it's a little bit better now. I think people are a little bit more geared up and um, with the reverse image searches and everything. I mean, that happens pretty quickly. Um, but years ago, people weren't so savvy. And so you've got a lot of Syrian children injured, dead, I mean, horrific images now being kind of transferred onto the Israelis, you know, guilt, like you did this, you killed these children and they were Syrian. 
And you got that from media outlets, you got that from politicians, you got that from big influencers, and it's just so damaging. I mean, the people who the people who make these images and you know put like a little you know Palestinian flag on or try and Photoshop, you know, what do they think they're doing? Mm. How do they think this is helping anyone? It's, it's bizarre, and I think they're you see even like celebrities jump on it as well you, you always see the sort of pray for palestine stuff and I, I remember years ago i think it was rihanna where they really wanted her to cancel i think maybe she did a concert in israel at one stage where um the conflict was increasing or something so you almost i, I think it's really hard to actually speak about look like, give an unbiased opinion or say anything remotely pro-ish israel not even pro just balance yeah people people are really nervous people get really nervous and they you know and then it's trying to translate so people get really nervous to kind of condone anti-semitism to a point yeah yeah you know it just becomes a really nervous issue that people just rather kind of like like pussyfoot around it because you know if they say something they're worried about the repercussions or what they might look like to their friends it's but there's no other form of racism that kind of you know has these effects on people it's it's bizarre that's that was kind of my leading to the next point is how do you change that so like I, we, we were talking um again i i think there are some similarities between british hindus and british jews in a sense i think we're both quite quiet people in general we, we're not really maybe it's a cultural thing i don't think we're very loud about our issues we, we kind of just get on with life mm. and often that means you kind of get ignored um or your issues aren't really addressed or they're not addressed the same i remember with I think it was pretty Patel where the Guardian did. They put a picture of her as a cow, for example. And yeah, that was and green, just, wasn't it? Yeah, which is. You know, I, I, I'm sure, for example, if that was, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a, a Bell cartoon, wasn't it? Yeah, Steve like. Bell cartoon. Yeah. I mean, if that was, let's just say, a Muslim Labour MP in a pig, I, I think the uproar would have been completely. Oh, they'd never beautiful. do it. They'd yeah. never do that. Which no. yeah, both are equally horrifically wrong, but yeah. it, it feels like that's different. I think what's worse for Jews in some sense is I, it definitely, I think people overstep the mark by quite some bit. So, so we kind of were saying that I think they Hindus need to be a bit more vocal about calling like things out, like if there's an issue or whatever. Do, do you think that's similar British Jews? Yeah. I know they shouldn't have to, I know it sounds so bad, but do, do you think that's what British Jews should do? I do, it's the same thing, isn't it? it's 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 kind of we can't let it go unchecked and we need to shout and scream about it and um i mean that's where uh, twitter's a terrible place (laughs) there is i mean it is a hell site sometimes but it has some really big benefits that it's given a voice to um a lot of people that probably weren't being paid attention to and probably should have been so yeah i think there is an element of that i think there's an element of education as well I mean, pushing it into schools. I go into my children's school, talk about Judaism and Jewish holidays and what it all means. Oh, I, think, I think just some kind of understanding. I think the next generation, I'm hoping, so I'm hoping the next generation is going to be better um, because I think we're putting in the effort now. Um, but just, and it's kind of something that if you kind of think of now, we kind of had this movement of violence against women mm-hmm. where men are now being told you know if what's not okay if you see your friends doing things that are not okay now you should call it out whereas you know years ago men saw their friends doing terrible things and just looked the other way um now there's this whole culture of you call out um things that are wrong and i think it's something that we have to put through to racism to anti-semitism and say if you see it call it out don't accept it don't turn around and be like oh what's a bit you know that's a bit racist call it out mm. Don't give them anywhere to go. Don't give them anywhere to um, thrive. And that's the thing, anti-Semitism has thrived in the daylight for quite a while now. Again, you know, I think after I think after World War II, it, it probably went a little bit underground again with the hard right, but now it, it's 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 wallowing in the daylight now. Hey, so we need that, to push it back. But that's what is, I think, scary. Well, we saw the last Labour leader in, in Jeremy Corbyn, some of his actions and stuff. and. I think it's just it's just been normalized and it's just it's okay like it's not really a big deal kind of thing and that, that's why I, I, anti-semitism is in some ways i like 
in some ways because it draws attention to the the people being racist shoes but sometimes like i was saying before it just feels like a softer way um a way to just say it's like it's not as bad as normal racism and i actually think it, it, it just seems to me that people pick and choose right now like in terms of at the moment you know you, you pick other religions that are just more cooler to talk about in terms of the, again the middle class kind of upper middle class kind of thing which um or races you know this is what's topical and okay mm. as opposed to being rational about it and mm. we're seeing like stats show that anti-semitism has gone through the roof in the last few years it's not decreasing or anything like that um, do, do you think more are you seeing more Jewish people being a bit more vocal in, in terms of calling it out and stuff or I'm not? seeing more Jewish people leave oh wow where, where are they going to Israel, Israel. yeah definitely you're definitely seeing a lot I mean I think I think a lot of them probably moved when Jeremy Corbyn came in and again you know that comes back to the point that shouldn't have taken was it four years 2015 29 it shouldn't have taken four years to get him out mm. you know everyone knew who he was before he was elected Labour leader. It should never have taken four years. And you know, now today it's kind of out in the open. We're like, oh, okay, yeah, now we know. We're like, no, you, we, we knew years ago, it shouldn't have happened. Um, but that said, I don't, I don't think things are getting better. And I don't, I think there, there might be some voices like myself, myself that are kind of speaking out vocally, but I think a lot of people don't want to, or just feel like it might be safer to leave. I mean, I, I can't remember the stats, but I have I've seen it pop up on my Twitter timeline quite a lot. The people just Jewish people don't feel like it's safe for their children in England anymore. And that's that is so upsetting. I mean, how horrible is that to kind of think it, it should never have come to this, but it has and we're here. So now what do we do? Well, I guarantee you just saying what you said, that the majority of people will not know that. Or they'll never have heard that. I, I, I honestly, I, I don't think unless you're remotely connected to a Jewish person, or you try and really make a, an effort to try and understand what's going on, that I don't think people would. I, I mean, I hide it. I hide it. I won't wear them again to in public. I hide it. Um, a lot of us hide it. Um, we have something called a mezuzah, which goes on our doors um, as you come in. I always put them on the inside so no one can see from the outside of my house that I'm Jewish. Right. You know, in Israel, you'd have it on the outside. Okay. Um, yeah, I'd never, I'd never think in a million years of putting it like just advertising that I'm Jewish. I just, you, you can't do it because you don't know who's going to knock on your door. That's it's, it's it's crazy. I mean, the the for me the worst one I, I've seen is um, in the last protest where the, the, these guys they lured out a really old. Um, Jewish shopkeeper they basically lured him out of his shop and then did just beat him up um, he must have been in his like 70s if not older he could barely walk I and mean, it's just horrible that was London like like I think it was like East London like it's not um, it's happened a few months ago so um, and you look at the crime stats uh, we actually Bob Blackman he talks about it quite a bit on it he talks mm -hmm. about it with us as well who calls out a lot and he, he's very much like um he calls out on demands kind of action he's been quite good at it but i think more people need to do it more people need to just um risk the the short it's, it's a short-term consequence at the end of the day i think the more i think it's the normal right thing to do um and yeah it, it, it's a shame it's not being called out enough and i i yeah. actually was talking about um the Jewish lawyers in the 1920s and 30s. I, I don't know if you know the story. This is where I've kind of, um, I want to say, it's pushed me to be a bit more of a free speech radicalist in some ways. Um, they essentially, um, they advocated, the, the, the Jewish lawyers in America, they advocated Adolf Hitler um, not to be censored in the States. And, and, and their reason was um, they want to be able to argue and show that how crazy and how ridiculous what he's saying is. And they were arguing that if you do censor him, then the issue is that there's going to be lots of people who may have some issues with Jews already, some prejudice or some bias. And the fact that we can't show how crazy he is, you're going to stoke up um, anti-Semitism or and, and to Jews. And funnily enough, that, that did happen. There was a massive in America. Um, I was watching a documentary about it in the 1930s and 40s 
people in America, white Christians became very anti-Semitic and were almost like sympathizing with Hitler, as bizarre as that sounds. But then now in, in 2022, this has got me thinking in terms of, well, it kind of happens open on Twitter at the moment and no one really does anything in terms of you see it on social media. If I like something, I think I liked something recently where it was something like, a, I don't know, someone was giving a speech in, in about Judaism or something. And there was protesters outside like heckling, like going crazy. Like there was like thousands of people as recent. Um, and I just liked it and, and not, nothing else in the sense of somebody had said, this is wrong. Yeah. And, don't yeah. this. And, yeah. I, and I liked it. I was like, okay, that's, I, I got like a barrage of abuse, like literally just like, and some people like talking about Palestine. And I was like, I, I literally just liked the fact that I, someone is saying that it's wrong to be racist to Jews. I, I've not said anything about Israel, Palestine. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know how. Well, that, that's also, that's another tell, isn't it? Cause you get it, we get it. We'll get it on Passover. You watch now, Passover is on, oh God, I should know, it's Friday, I think. So you'll watch now all of the, you know, British politicians on both sides. We've heard Starmer will do this as well. They'll put up their posts, you know, happy Passover to all the Jews in England. Blah, da, 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 da. Hopefully they won't do what Labour did and put up a picture of bread, which we're not supposed to have on Passover. But, you know, they'll all do it. And then you will look underneath and you will see, what about Palestine? What about Palestine? What about pa It's nothing to do with the conflict. It's the religion. But it's just such a massive tell. That's a really good point. I think differentiating between the religion and Israel is a whole nother, maybe we can do that on, a, on another podcast, but that's like <laughs> a whole nother ball game in terms of, I think, I think people really don't get that. I, yeah. I, I think people associate Israel, Jews as the same thing. And it's yeah. bizarre, bizarre. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we don't do that. We don't, we don't do that with anyone else, right? We don't, we don't kind of like match up religion send me to be honest there's only one jewish state so perhaps that's not a fair comparison um but you know every time something bad happens in you know in the uk or a christian country we don't go oh, christians you know yeah 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 <laughs> so a... yeah it's it's a strange it's a strange one yeah well look it's really good having you on charlotte it's good i think it, i think a lot of people have been educated on judaism and what's going on israel palestine from this conversation and, and hopefully we can raise some awareness and uh it sounds so bizarre but to say anti-semitism is really wrong and bad um and so hopefully this raises some awareness and on that yeah i hope so i hope people go away because it's it's such a broad topic and i hope people can go away do their own research i mean i think that would help if people just did some research i think it would help um but yeah, and also going there. I know the Conservative Friends of Israel do trips to Israel. Um, I think they should be doing more, and I think they should be taking... I mean, they're kind of preaching to the choir a little bit, I think. I hope they don't mind me saying that. But I think you need to be taking... Perhaps people that are not so um, obviously um, biased or already educated on these topics, I think you need somebody to take people that perhaps don't know. And oh, maybe maybe um, Conservative Friends of the Commonwealth should do some trips as well. Just yeah, that out yeah. There. yeah. I, I would 100% be up for that and trying to, trying to organise It's always that. good to educate and, you know, open people's minds to different cultures and situations. So it's always a great thing. Agreed. A any sort of, we talk about information, is there anywhere you'd recommend for people to get their information from, aside from following you on Twitter? Is there, is there anywhere else? I mean, in particular, I've... I mean, there's a few, but I don't want to really plug anyone in particular because, you know, everyone's got their own style and their own angles. I would like, it's kind of like, which newspaper do you read? Well, I, I read all of them mm. because then you, you kind of have a broad understanding of where, you know, where the truth might be. Read all of them. Read everything. Just, you know, don't stick to kind of like one echo chamber. Go across, you know, across the spectrum is probably the healthiest place for you to be. I think that's a good note to end it on. Thank you for your uh, Thank your you so much for having me. That's okay. Cheers, Charlotte. Cheers.